I'm Jim Warnicke, uh, retired fisheries program manager uh, from the Arizona Game and Fish Department. Ah, <laughs> and a mushroom foraging enthusiast. Oh, wow, a stump full of oyster mushrooms. What a find. He's hunting for Easter eggs, the kind that show up in the summer along with the monsoon rains. We're out here in the, uh, in the uh, White Mountains around Mount Baldy. I really like getting out. I, you know, I think all biologists were uh, created uh, collectors and so forth, and so I love to come out and uh, participate in this Easter egg hunt, if you will, uh, for mushrooms, for fungi in the forest. Although I can see that there have been people through the area picking here, I don't think they got all of them. At least I hope not. Oh, yeah. They didn't get this big boy. Nice choice edible. King will eat. A word of warning. Wild mushrooms can be delicious, but they can also be deadly. Never eat a mushroom unless you're absolutely certain it's safe. When in doubt, throw it out. You want to have the positive ID not only from books, but a local expert. Beautiful aspen bleed. Wow. I encourage people to seek uh, information from the Arizona Mushroom Society. It's called now, it used to be the Arizona Mushroom Club. Warnicke is becoming an expert himself. He produced a DVD, Arizona's 11 Most Edible Mushrooms, to educate and inspire folks to get out and enjoy the diversity of fungi in the forest. They're the jewels of the forest floor is what I like to call mushrooms. So it's, it's really neat not just to be out here, but to start to understand uh, what's going on in the, the forest floor. So I think that we're uh, probably in the right area that there's going to be another thunderstorm on us here and it's going to wet, wet the place down and uh, our uh, mushrooms are going to continue to pop up and uh, we'll continue to forage and find them and enjoy ourselves. <laughs> Since we're right at the edge of the meadow, there's a lot of grassy spots butted up right against the, the conifers, the, the fir trees there. And because the king beliefs are associated with the roots of those trees, uh, the roots come all the way out here, and a lot of times you'll find those king beliefs uh, in the grasses. You know, you're looking, you're looking, you're looking, and you know, and all of a sudden you see a nice, <laughs> you know, orange cap like this. You go, ah, oh, is that an edible one, or is it not an edible one? You know, you go over and look, and you feel underneath, and you feel those sponge tubes, and you go, ah, it's boletus. It's one that I, I can eat. What we'll do is we'll just wiggle it back and forth and pull him out like that. Here's, instead of gills, he has sponge tubes right here. This seems like a great specimen. We're going to clean them up. I'm going to shave them. We go all the way around and get the dirt off of them. Indeed, there isn't any bug holes in the bottom here. This guy looks like a virginal specimen. No bugs to contend with. A prime specimen of King Belit mushroom. These oysters are fairly easy to tell apart from others that grow on stumps. You turn it over and you can see they have a very, very short stem right here. They're a gill mushroom and they're actually kind of a clamshell shape like that and that's why they're known as, as oyster mushrooms. These are the ones that would go really well if you were sautéing them and putting them onto your uh, big old T-bone steak. Yummy. Just cut them right close to the stump like that and everything we're cutting off is edible. Not much trimming necessary. Ooh, look at this. Some chanterelles. A gourmet mushroom. Smell a little bit like apricots. Here's a good find. Wow. Look at that bad boy. Cut this little end part off there. Oh, look how nice and white he is. Feels pretty solid, man. Beautiful white king bolete. Oh, wow. Look at this. Or if these are what I think they are, they look like a, an almond agaric. 
They smell a little bit like almonds. They taste uh, close to a portobello, a, a little bit sweeter. It has these, uh, these brown gills, agaricus is the, is the genera, and actually the button mushroom, the portobello mushroom, are all members of that particular family, that genera. I'll wiggle them out, turn them over. These are fungus gnat larvae, maggots. I'm not going to eat him. <laughs> These are lobsters. I call them the 50 mile an hour mushrooms because you can spot them going 50 miles an hour down the dirt road because they're so brightly colored. They are actually a parasite on the other mushrooms. And they're called lobster mushrooms because they're kind of shaped a little bit like a lobster's claw. A friend of mine likes to make lobster bisque and use lobster mushrooms because they taste so much like seafood. I like lobster mushrooms because they, they uh, not only because of the way they taste, but they remain fairly firm and crisp. So when you put them in soups and so forth, they don't get soggy or mushy or anything like that, is that they have a very nice texture, uh, a nice uh, mild flavor. So they end up going in a bag by themselves because they're dirty, dirty little boys. Excellent specimens of King Belit. We did exceptionally well, you know, for the three hours or so that we were out there, we got a good uh, diversity, probably six or seven different uh, species of uh, edible mushrooms, and some of them really, you know, Epicurean quality. Let's go find some more. So much country to cover.